Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday, January the 16th, 2022. It is currently 8.07 a.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live right here from the very empty sanctuary of Victory Baptist Church, right here in the middle of nowhere, Texas. But yes, the sanctuary is very empty. I'm stressing that because sadly, it's going to remain empty all day. Yes, because of the situation with COVID in the local area and some people in our church who have been sick and tested positive for COVID or have been exposed to people with COVID, well, today we cannot have live services. When I say live services, we cannot have in-person services So that means I'm going to be spending a lot of my day sitting right here in this empty sanctuary in front of this microphone, hopefully offering you up as much Bible teaching, devotional thoughts, commentary, just we're going to be talking about one thing after another, and hopefully by the time I leave this church this evening, now I will leave for a little bit to go home and get some food, but then I'll come back this afternoon. When I finally leave here, this evening. I hope everyone can say that was a productive day. That was a great day of Bible teaching, of commentary, of theological discussion, and that everyone had benefited greatly from it. That is my hope. I I don't know what, when it's all said and done, really all I can, all I can do is the best I can, and then hopefully and pray that God will use everything I did to make a difference in someone's life and benefit someone spiritually. I'm just going to try to be as dedicated as I can to do as much as I can before the day is over or before my voice decides to give out, considering it's already starting off pretty rough this morning, but that's okay. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I thought we would start this morning with kind of a devotional thought, and this is very impromptu because really uh, this, the thought of what we're going to be talking about really came to me as I was driving to the church this morning, um, I got, I mean, I got in my car, I, I, t- I took a turn, and r- right when I took a turn, I saw something that I have seen literally hundreds of times while driving to the church. And I, I've, I've always had like a thought here or there about it, but it never really hit me in, in, a, in a spiritual way, right? I've made like observations about it, but but just kind of after, over time, really, I just not, don't even think about it because like I've seen it so many times, I don't even really, I'm like, okay, it's, yeah, there it is again. And just kind of move on and, you know, down the road, just keep on driving. But today when I saw it, I was like, whoa, that is convicting. That is very convicting. And I was convicted by someone's morning walk. Let me explain. I have been driving here to the church now, it seems like, for most of my adult life. And anytime I drive to the church and I am I drive and I leave my house somewhere around 7:30 a.m. If I'm driving to the church anywhere between 7:30 and 8 a.m., it's almost guaranteed that as I turn one corner, I'm going to see someone taking their morning walk. It's an older lady. I would guess she's probably in her 60s, and she's, I mean, anytime I drive to the church, again, anywhere between 7.30 and 8 a.m., there she is. There, there she is. She's always walking towards oncoming traffic, which makes sense, right, because you want to see the cars coming at you. You don't want your back to the cars, and you have no idea if they're swerving over or, or if they're not paying any attention, so you want to see the cars coming at you, so she's always walking towards oncoming traffic. What's at times somewhat, and probably the thing that's always gotten my attention is she's never looking at the road. She's never looking up. She she always has her phone. I think it's in her right hand. And she's always looking down at her phone. I don't know what she's watching. I don't know if she's watching a TV show, cat videos on YouTube. I don't know what she's doing. If she's checking her Facebook status, I don't know. But she's never looking at the road. And there's been multiple times She's looking down at her phone and you can just kind of start seeing her veering over. And I'm like, oh, 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 oh. And a couple of times I've had to like hit my horn like, hey, lady, get back off the, hey, 
pay attention, right? There's been multiple times I've wanted to roll down the window and go, hey, could you pay attention? You're going to get killed, right? Don't do that. But she's always looking at her phone, always looking at her phone. Um, but there she is, day in, day out, walking. Now, to be fair, probably the very first observation I ever had, and maybe it wasn't a nice observation, but my first observation, and I'm just going to be very honest with you, is I literally wanted to stop, roll the window down, and said, hey, hey, you need to stop walking. You need to go to McDonald's, get a Big Mac, large fry, apple pie, and a large Coke because she looks like she weighs 60 pounds, and if the wind blows hard, she's going to be she's going to be blown over. I'm like, you don't need to be walking. You need to be eating. That, that's really my first observation because literally she is like so skinny. It, it's crazy. But there she is, day in, day out, walking. Day in, day out. And so I've I've kind of like, well, there she is. Now, a lot of times when I see it, I'm like, you know what? It's it's kind of a nice morning for a walk. Okay. Hopefully she's enjoying herself. Okay. Well, there she is again. All right. All right. Good morning. Phone. So it's like I, I my first thought was, what is she doing? But almost the second I said, What is she doing? Immediately it hit me. And I and then I said again to myself, wait, what is she doing? Because the current temperature outside here in West Texas, are you ready for this? Is 20 degrees. Two, zero, 20 degrees. When I walked outside to start the car this morning, I almost said, well, time to cancel church because I cancel all live broadcasting because it's too cold for me to walk to my front door and start the car, much less drive to church, get out of the uh, car and try to carry everything into the church. I'm like, no, it's no, it's 20 degrees. But there she was, 20 degrees out taking her morning walk. And as soon as I said, what are you doing the second time? It hit me. Look how committed she is to this morning walk. Now, a part of me wanted to say, but why, why are you out when it's 20 degrees? It's going to be 67, 68 degrees this afternoon. Why didn't you just move your walk from this morning to this afternoon? But it doesn't seem to matter. It doesn't rain, <laughs> cold, it doesn't matter if it's between 7.30 and 8 a.m., she's going to be out there taking her morning walk. I've seen her, I don't, I don't think there's ever been a time that I've driven to the church between that time period that I have not seen her out there walking. It's just seen, she is committed to it. So as I started driving down the road, going, man, it's 20 degrees, what is she doing? Then I started saying, wait a minute, what am I doing? What am I doing? So then I stopped thinking about her and started thinking about myself. I'm like, what am I doing? Not in regards to getting up in the morning walking, but then I started thinking, what am I doing for my Christian walk? Now, we are very aware that the Bible refers to the Christian life as a race, right? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight... And the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So we definitely know and have heard all of the sermons about the Christian life being a race. But we also should be very aware that over and over the Christian life is also described as a walk. I'll just, I just got a number of scriptures here that will, that will kind of point this out. 1 Thessalonians 2.12, so that you would walk in a manner worthy of the God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Colossians 1.10, so that you walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work. Galatians 5.25, if we live by the spirit, let us also walk by the spirit. Uh, Romans 6.4, therefore we've been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Walk in newness of life. Those are words that I say when I baptize someone, buried in the likeness of his death, raised 
to walk in newness of life. You're raised in a sense and your and your salvation, you're buried with Christ and then you are raised with him, you you are resurrected with him and now you are to walk in newness of life. When you are saved, you begin a new walk. A walk. How committed are you to that walk? Here is a lady again 60s, she may even be close to 70. She looks like she weighs 80 pounds, and there she is every single day walking, 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 walking. Now, she's doing that for physical health. She may even be doing that for mental well-being. It may help her mentally, but she's doing it for physical benefits, maybe mental benefits, maybe even emotional benefits. She's she's engage in that physical exercise for all of the physical, I will say all of the benefits in this life. But how committed are you and how committed am I to our spiritual walk that we every single day at a specific time, we ensure that we are spending time memorizing scripture, spending time reading scripture, Spending time, very important, actually studying scripture, spending time meditating on scripture, spending time praying for people. Every day we look for opportunities to minister, to share the gospel, to disciple someone. How committed are we to that? There she was, 20 degrees. I mean, I'm still I'm right here on my laptop. It's got the temperature right here telling me what the temperature is currently as outside. It's 20 degrees. And I'm just saying, she could have postponed the walk. She could have woken up and said, no, it's, it's 20 degrees. There's no way. I'll just, uh, she could have said, I'll wait till later this afternoon. She could have said, I'll wait. I haven't looked at the forecast, but probably by tomorrow, it'll be back in the 70s again. Uh, she could have waited just another day. She could have just postponed it and said, now nah, it's a little too cold. But there she is, committed. And sometimes I don't think that as Christians, we have the same level of commitment to our spiritual walk as many do to their physical health, to their to, to other to other things that they are committed to. I, I've talked about it so many times that the very, the corner that I turn, so here, here, if you kind of picture this in your mind, so I come out of the housing residence in which I live, right? I take a left. That just goes like not even a block. It's like half a block and then there's a light and I turn right at that light. And this is kind of like the access road that's going to lead to where I can get up on, on the highway, on the freeway. Well, Right when I turn on that access road, and it's 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 not even really a, a typical access road. It's kind of it's kind of because now they've the on ramp they've gotten rid of. So really, you go down. I don't know, maybe two blocks, maybe 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 three blocks, and then there's a stop sign. Then you turn left, and then you can try to get on on the highway. So it's kind of a weird setup right now. But it's on that road where I always see see her walking. It's always right there. So I always see her walking right there. Then I get to the stop sign. I immediately take a left and then it's a it's a left, immediate right. And then as soon as I start driving, getting up on the freeway, right to my right is a CrossFit gym. Now, I've used the CrossFit gym multiple times in illustrations, right? Because I see it every time. And guess what I see? I always, when I drive past it, there's cars. All, there's all these cars. Sometimes the people are outside running around the building, right? And I'm like, there they are. Now, as soon as I get past the CrossFit gym, as soon as I get past the CrossFit gym, to my left is a big church, super nice building. It's almost, the parking lot is almost always empty. There's never anyone there. And I'm like, so here's all the people at the CrossFit gym for physical benefit, but the church is empty because, well, nobody wants to show up for anything for any spiritual benefit. So sometimes we have to really just be honest with ourselves. How truly committed are we to our spiritual life, to our spiritual walk. And I, and I, and you've got to hear what I'm about to say. Because typically, when when any kind of devotional thought like this is put forth, any kind of preaching like this is put forth, any kind of lesson that uses this, because I'm not using any like never heard before illustration. This kind of illustration has been used a million times. 
But usually when the illustration is used, it, it feels to me that it turns into a very legalistic thing, right? And maybe because that's how I approached it for so many years in my Christian life, you know, because I was almost taught that this is the way to think. If you're not waking up and reading your Bible and memorizing scripture and studying the Bible, if you're not doing those things, it's probably because you're not saved. That's how it was just absolutely crammed into my head over and over and over and over and over and over that these You do these things because this proves you're a Christian. And if you don't do these things, you're not saved. And I, and I definitely went with that for a long time in my Christian life. Now I realize that that becomes majorly problematic. One, it makes my salvation dependent really on what I'm doing, not on what Christ did, that I'm looking for proof of my salvation and what I'm doing not in what Christ accomplished once and for all on the cross. So it becomes almost like a works-based concept, and it really destroys the doctrine of salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, because of Christ alone. So I've kind of, I've moved away from that. And, and, but whenever you mention it, I know some people, that's almost the way they, they, they've been so taught that way of thinking that it's almost like, well, I know I'm saved. So I, I think... I don't, I don't know how people approach it. I think some people hear an illustration like this and it immediately becomes like this, it becomes a burden on them. Okay, well, I've got to do this. I need to do better. I need to do better. And it becomes a burden of almost a legalistic mindset. And I don't want this to be a legalistic mindset. I think that that's, I think that's actually damaging and not beneficial spiritual. I think, and ultimately it just becomes, you're doing those things in order to prove that you're saved, and then they become almost like a badge of honor. Look at me. I know that I'm saved because I do these things. And what's wrong with the rest of you people? You're probably not even saved. You probably probably profess Christ, but you don't possess Christ. And it almost becomes something like that. And all of that, I think, is detrimental to any meaningful spiritual life. I don't want this to be a legalistic thing. I want it to be just a convicting thing that, wait a minute, we claim to love Christ. We claim that the Bible is this amazing book that's the inspired word of God and it's our spiritual food and that we're supposed to meditate on it day and night. We talk about that, how that we're to love God because he first loved us. And we talk about how amazing God is and all that he's done for us. We should be convicted, not in some legalistic way, just convicted that time and time again, people show more commitment to the things of this world, to their own physical well-being. They, they show more commitment to so many different things than the church does to the things of God. Now, I don't want it to be a legalistic thing. I don't want it to be a, 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 something that you become spiritually arrogant and puffed up about. It should just be something that we want to do. I'm assuming that the lady who walks every morning is something she wants to do. There's probably a, a, a great chance she finds some deep pleasure in it. I wish for Christians, it wasn't a matter of legalism. It wasn't a matter of trying to prove that they're saved. But there would just be this every day. There's the want to there. I want to spend time meditating on God's word. I want to spend time studying. I want to spend time listening to sermons or Christian podcasts. I want to be praying. I want to be discipling people. I want to look for opportunities to minister to people. I want to do whatever I can to help my church or help a Christian ministry be stronger. I, I want to be, I want to, who can I encourage? Who can I support in whatever way that I can with my time, with my help, with, with what, what finances, whatever the case may be, and just constantly be doing everything we can to be walking that spiritual path, that spiritual walk that is before us in a way that is just consistent, steady. It's nothing flashy. I mean, she's not out there every morning like running a marathon. She's not trying to, you know, run the mile in some record time. She just, it's just this slow, steady kind of walk. I mean, just almost like she's shuffling her feet. It's not even a, it's not even really a, one of those, you know, speed walkers. It's just a nice, slow, steady walk as she's 
paying attention to whatever she's watching on her phone and probably one day going to be hit by a car. Okay, So she needs to stop doing that. But the point is, there she is. In other words, it would be easy for me to, to, I could say, what is she doing? Pay attention. Someone may even say, come on, put forth a little bit more effort. What are you doing? But no, there's no reason to criticize what she's doing because she's out there doing it every single day. And for Christians, instead of worrying about how much someone is doing or what they're doing or how, just be grateful that there are, hopefully that there are Christians out there that every day they are committed to doing those basic things of the Christian walk. Memorizing a scripture, reviewing the scripture that they're memorized. That's why we have the Bible, Bible memory app to try to get people engaged in that. That every day that they're studying the Bible. That's why we do the uh, Bible study exercises here on this podcast to try to give some, something for people to study and give them homework so they have specific things to do. Right. I try to uh, we talk about so many different things that hopefully that you have something to meditate on. Right. I try to we have the situation with the discord channel so that people can discuss and talk about spiritual things. OK, hopefully you 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 pay attention to what's going on around you and around the world and that you're praying for things. Hopefully you're looking for opportunities to disciple people. Hopefully you're doing what you can to, to support ministries and encourage and, and do everything you can to, to help further the kingdom of God. It's just that slow, steady consistency that we all need. But what should motivate that slow, steady consistency is not some legalistic burden, but just because we want to, we desire to. Here's a crazy idea. We find pleasure and joy in it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There are some people, they love to jog. They love to go outside and walk. I think it's ridiculous. I'm not walking anywhere unless I have a specific purpose. Like if I, if I'm going, if I'm going, first of all, why am I even going to go outside and walk anywhere? I have a car. Okay. So I'm not walking anywhere. Okay. And I'm not jogging anywhere and I'm not running anywhere unless I'm being chased. Okay. So I, But there's people who find great joy in doing those things. I don't relate, okay? I don't even want to be outside, much less out there walking and jogging, okay? But but there's people who find joy in it. All right, great. That's wonderful. That's awesome. But for us, it's not because we have to. Shouldn't we find joy in spending time fellowshipping, communing with our God? reading his word, meditating on it, talking to other believers about it? Shouldn't we just, like, it's not even like, hey, you have to do this. That, that's what I guess, that's the one thing that's always baffled me about Christianity. And, I, and, and obviously pastors all over the country feel the same way because pastors all over the country constantly have to preach these sermons. Come on, people, those daily spiritual disciplines. Now, sometimes they they have, some of them take the approach, if you don't do this, you're not saved. I, I don't think that really changes anything. I think a lot of people were like, they, they they will say, yes, if you don't do these things, you're not saved, and then they never do them. <laughs> but then they want to run around saying, You have to do these things or you're not saved. I'm like, you don't even do them. So why are you holding to that view? Because you wouldn't be saved. But uh, I think a lot of pastors realize, man, I mean, all the statistics prove it. I mean, most Christians don't read their Bible on a regular and consistent basis. Few ever engage in meaningful Bible study. Hard to get Christians even to talk about anything spiritual. I mean, you can you can create all the platforms in the world and say, come on, Christians, let's talk about the things of God. And you're, you'll, you'll get silence or, you know, hey, let's post pictures of cats. You know, it's like it's hard to get people to actually engage in meaningful discussion. Getting Christians to memorize the Bible that's almost seems ridiculous unless they're a brand new Christian. And I think pastors and ministries have strived and strived to try to get these things to happen. And it just seems no, no matter all the efforts, even all the threats, hasn't changed it. And I think the question comes down to why are Christians not motivated to? Why? Why do we not want to? Why do we not enjoy it? Why do we not enjoy it? Like what, what's, there's something deeply 
wrong spiritually when we don't enjoy the things of God. We don't desire the things of God. We don't want the things of God. We desire and want so many other things. And we engage in those other things far with far more passion, far more zeal, and far more commitment. Now, all I can say this morning as I'm beginning my day of live broadcasting is, and I just want to challenge you. I don't know when you're going to hear this, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, who knows, 10 weeks from now, whenever you hear this, I want you to just think about what a 60 year old, almost 70 year old woman out for a morning walk when it's 20 degrees in West Texas. In other words, she's not in an area where she would be used to that kind of temperature, but there she is. She could have easily postponed it to to later this day, uh, January the 16th, 2022. She could have just postponed it till this afternoon and it would have been 60 something degrees, but no, she's keeping her commitment. She's out there doing it. I don't know if she was having any fun. I don't know. I don't know, but there she was. And as Christians, you know what? There's some days we may not enjoy it, but we just need to say, you know what? It's time to spend some time in God's word. There's time to memorize scripture. It's time to review my memory scripture. Not because I'm trying to prove that I'm saved. Not because of some legalistic burden. Because I want to. And if the want to is not there, then maybe it's time to really try to figure out why. What happened? Just some thoughts on this Sunday morning. And uh, I hope you'll get, I hope it will be convicting and you can tell me what you think. And I hope you understand. I don't want this to be legalistic burden. I, I, I don't want, and I don't even want it to be like, well, this, I was just looking the other day, there was an article, I think at crosswalk.com and like five signs to know that you are a Christian. And it was these t- typical things, a love for God's word, a love for prayer, you know, these basic things, you know, and if you don't do these things, you're proving you're not saved. And I'm like, well, Okay, once again, so that my salvation is not based off what Christ does, it's based off what I do. Now, when I was a young Christian, I would have, I would have, I would have taken those five points, written them down, and looking for an opportunity to preach and say, You people aren't saved. I, I would have, but now I realize, wait a minute, that's and not only that, it, it's because it's obvious that that hasn't changed. It doesn't change anybody. You can say that all day, and the people will just sit in the pew and convince themselves that they're still saved it's just it's hilarious it's it's so funny the people who are so like we have to have these standards to prove that people are saved we have to there has to be this change and if there's not then people aren't saved the people who get so adamant about that and seem to get so upset about that are sometimes the very people that if you really start breaking down what they do they would be condemned by the very standards they're trying to impose on everyone else as somehow proof of one's salvation. You know, my, my only hope, my only proof of salvation is the finished work of Jesus Christ who hung on a cross to die for my sins. And if Jesus died for my sins and by placing my faith in him, my sins are forgiven and his perfect obedience is imputed to my account, then I don't need to look to my works to prove that I'm saved because I'm covered in the perfect work of Christ. That's the work I need to look to. Now, that doesn't excuse me not doing anything. And I am to, to walk a, a new way. I, 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 there's no, no one saying you shouldn't do those things. I just think that we sometimes destroy the gospel by wanting to somehow prove who's saved or not saved by our, our, our arbitrary list that we create. And I think that that is problematic. Just something to consider on this Sunday morning. All right. Thanks for listening. I'll be back on the air here shortly. You can email me, newsif at yahoo.com. That's newsif at yahoo.com. I apologize for at the beginning my having a few problems with my voice, but it's still, my, uh, it's cold outside and my voice is kind of like, you know what? I, I think uh, you're not ready, but now I think it's a little warmed up. So we will proceed and see how many things we can get done this morning. A lot to do. Hopefully you'll stay with us. And if you can't listen live, well, all of these will be ready for you to listen to whenever you can. And hopefully we can do something today that will be, well, beneficial for your spiritual walk and for mine. All right. Thanks for listening. God bless.